Sobre a técnica da nanomotorização da anestesia da tireoide, é algo muito simples. Primeiro, durante a indução anestésica, ou seja, no momento em que o paciente vai ser anestesiado, é colocado no tubo plástico que vai na boca do paciente um eletrodo, ou seja, um adesivo que na sua ponta tem dois contatos. Esses contatos elétricos estão junto das cordas vocais. No momento da cirurgia, temos uma caneta na mão. Essa caneta provoca é, pequenos, vamos dizer, mini choques no nervo, ou seja, estimulações do nervo. Esses valores vão variar de alguns miliamperes. Normalmente usamos um miliamper na caneta. Esse um miliamper entra em contato com o nervo, provoca uma descarga elétrica. Essa descarga elétrica ativa o nervo, que automaticamente vai, é o nervo que contrai as cordas vocais. Logo, as cordas vocais vão se contrair na cirurgia, bater naquele eletrodo e eu vou ter um gráfico mostrando que as cordas vocais, sim, estão em perfeito funcionamento durante a cirurgia. Existem dois tipos de monitorização. A monitorização que chamamos de contínua, onde durante toda a cirurgia é feito uma estimulação contínua no nervo vago, que é o pai do nervo da voz. O nervo da voz é o laringeu recorrente. Durante a cirurgia da tireoide, nós vemos diretamente o laringeu recorrente. Essa monitorização contínua mostra todo o funcionamento do nervo laringeu recorrente durante a cirurgia. E a monitorização intermitente. Como seria a monitorização intermitente? Em alguns momentos da cirurgia somente, eu encosto a minha caneta no nervo laringeu recorrente e ele mostra a funcionabilidade daquele trecho do nervo que eu estou examinando. Então são duas monitorizações diferentes. A contínua e a intermitente e ambas são usadas em cirurgia da tireoide. O seu cirurgião pode ter a preferência de usar por uma ou por outra. Mas lembro, a monitorização é de suma importância para que, dessa forma, prevenimos a paralisia das duas cordas vocais e o uso da traqueostomia. Pois, se no meu primeiro nervo ele não ficou bom, eu não arrisco o outro lado da tireoide. Não vejo o outro nervo. Eu paro a cirurgia e preservo a funcionabilidade respiratória da laringe durante a cirurgia da tireoide, que é um grande temor para todos. Espero ter ajudado vocês. Muito obrigado.
preparation for intraoperative monitoring of the recurrent laryngeal nerve starts with the InnoMed Select laryngeal electrode. The electrode contacts are adhered to a standard endotracheal tube. A spacer on the tip of the electrode enables the accurate positioning of the select electrode to the ET tube and balloon. The connecting tracks are applied spirally on the tube. During intubation, a good contact between the recording electrode and the vocal cords is imperative. Thanks to the 360 degree coverage of the surface with recording electrodes, signal to noise ratio is improved and tube rotation does not impair the signal recording. The automatic electrode test function built into the C2 nerve monitor confirms the quality of electrode contact to tissue and the correct connection to the C2 monitoring device. The initial stimulation of the vagal nerve is an essential confirmation of the correct positioning of the tube electrode on the vocal cords. Additionally, the initial stimulation of the vagal nerve serves as a baseline for post-resectional vagus testing and also as a detection method for the anatomical variety of a non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. Using the four-channel InnoMed Select laryngeal electrode, the C2 nerve monitor automatically records and detects the muscle response on all four channels. The C2 Select software selects the optimal trace from the four signals, displays the traces on the screen and delivers an acoustic tone to the surgeon. Annotation of the recording is made simple. Using a single key press, the user can select from predefined comments. These comments can be reviewed and a complete report printed including comments. For the continuous monitoring of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, the InnoMed Delta electrode is placed directly on the vagal nerve. In order to implant the Delta electrode, an approximately 2 cm circumferential dissection of the vagal nerve is performed. After dissection, the vagal nerve is gently lifted by means of a vessel loop. Once the electrode is placed underneath the vagal nerve, a light pull on the electrode cable allows the nerve to slip into the electrode cup where it's held in place by the specially shaped silicon body. From that moment on, a continuous vagus stimulation begins. The baseline function provides a real-time trend of changes to the latency and amplitude of the recording against the baseline defined. A single button press activates the baseline function. The trend feature provides an optimum view of any gradual and important change in nerve conduction. Continuous vagus monitoring is enabled. The hand-guided stimulation probe can be used for localizing the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The visual identification of the recurrent laryngeal nerve is detected automatically and documented before resection. The user may also add additional comments with a single touch comment function. Identification of the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve is performed prior to ligation of the superior thyroid artery. Stimulating the external branch with a stimulator leads to a visible twitch of the cricothyroid muscle. In 70 to 80 percent of cases, the presence of a communicating branch leads to a corresponding recording signal displayed by the nerve monitor. The preservation of nerve function is verified after ligation of the vessels. Continuous vagus monitoring provides feedback about the quality of recurrent laryngeal nerve conductivity. Decreases in nerve conductivity can be detected immediately, allowing the surgeon to act before an irreversible nerve injury can occur from a disturbance of nerve conduction. Injuries related to traction, pressure, heat or ischemia lead to characteristic response signal changes. These changes typically include amplitude decreases and latency increases. Traction forces required during the mobilization of the thyroid gland and dissection of the ligament of Berry represent a high risk to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. During this critical step, the continuous monitoring of the vagus nerve is the only reliable method of avoiding nerve injury at the entry point of the nerve into the larynx. In the event of subtle or evolving nerve lesions, resulting in corresponding changes in signal amplitude and latency, the surgeon is automatically alerted by visual and acoustic alarm functions built into the Vegas monitoring software tool. Immediate reaction, including the reduction of mobilization forces, directly leads to recovery and preservation of the nerve function. 
Presented with a very complex case, the surgeon uses the information provided by the continuous monitoring to adapt and adjust the surgical approach in order to prevent a complete loss of nerve signal and preserve nerve function. By intermediate dissection on the contralateral side, the surgeon provides the nerve with a rest and recovery period. In the following quarter of an hour, the nerve function recovers gradually. This is monitored and displayed on the trend graph of amplitude and latency values on the C2 screen. All these can be viewed using a Wi-Fi connection to an iPad. A five-fold increase in signal amplitude response indicated a significant recovery of nerve conductivity. In view of this, the surgeon decides to continue the resection. In order to avoid any further irritation of the nerve, the surgeon continues his dissection, adopting a cranial approach. The continuous acoustic feedback resulting from vagus monitoring informs and alerts the surgeon of further disturbance to optimum nerve function. The surgeon finishes the resection without further nerve irritation. Thanks to the change in strategy based on the information from the continuous vagus monitoring, the vocal cord function was completely preserved in this complex case. All nerve functions, including vagus monitoring signals and the responses from direct recurrent laryngeal nerve stimulation, are stored. The stored record includes any comments or remarks made at the time of recording. The smooth silicon material and design enables easy detachment from the nerve. Removal of the delta electrode can be done by simply pulling on the connection cable without exposing the vagal nerve to any risk.